Amorosa is beginning a media blitz for her Trash Trump book. Meet the Press this morning, Today Show, and MSNBC tomorrow, I'm sure much else. Guy Benson, um, Chuck Todd on NBC asked her, how could you have defended Trump so vigorously for all these years? And now you're saying all these terrible things. She said, well, I had a blind spot when it came to Donald Trump. I wanted to see the best in him. But now he's a racist and a misogynist. Do you find that argument persuasive? No, I don't find almost anything that she says persuasive. I think that she is someone who understands her momentary self-interest and pursues it very, very aggressively. On The Apprentice, she was known as the backstabbing, lying, conniving villain, and that's exactly sort of who she is and how she's conducted You're herself. saying that wasn't just uh, done for television purposes? Oh, apparently not. <laughs> so, I mean, you can question the wisdom of bringing her into the White House, uh, as this administration did, and now they're getting burned for it. But, look, she has contradicted herself numerous times. She claimed that she had no direct knowledge of hearing a tape of the president supposedly saying the N-word back in the day. Now she says, I heard it clear as day. I think she's a liar who will say anything. Mm -hmm. uh, we played earlier the clip from Meet the Press, Susan Free Show, where uh, she secretly taped John Kelly when she was getting fired, and he said a friendly departure would be best for your reputation. She says that's a threat. Um, wouldn't any corporate executive say, hey, let's have an amicable parting? It's not like a threat if, to you. Especially if, it, if they were forcing her out. It's not like she was resigning, and then they said, okay, can we keep this quiet, whatever reasons are behind it. They told her, you're going to leave because you violated some, some serious terms of employment here, and we want you to leave with integrity and your head held high. That's not a threat. But, you know, hell hath no fury like a person who feels they've been wrong, wrongly terminated. And I think that's what you're seeing here. I think she's really disgruntled. Um, there's no telling what she's saying is true or verifiable, but she's definitely angry and, and she's getting a big platform. I would just add, hell hath no fury as somebody who's been terminated and has a book to sell. Uh, right. Capri, <laughs> Capri Cafaro, you know Amorosa. Uh, you can talk about that. Um, and so also, uh, Chuck Todd asked her mm -hmm. why she didn't resign after Charlottesville. Of course, the president came under a lot of criticism mm -hmm. for his handling of that violence one year ago, as it turns right. out. Does she have credibility as an African-American woman, African -American woman to say, oh, I only realized since I was booted that he is, he is a racist? I think this is uh, an issue of a, a larger, uh, as Guy said, I mean, a, a larger issue of credibility. I, I have met Omarosa, you know, a handful of times. She's from my hometown. Um, so she's in Ohio. in Ohio and you know she came from a from a rough area um, and she's a scrapper look and that's that's what my community is I mean we even have a baseball team called the scrappers right. as the mascot right so here is a person who you know basically scraped her way to the top via Donald Trump's successes took it all the way to the White House mm -hmm. and now she's flipping the script and still using Donald Trump as a way to achieve her success for this book by you know creating this level of animus and intrigue just briefly, what do you make of Sean Spicer's argument that um, she, the media are going to just fall in love with her in this book, despite the fact that she was kind of treated as a sideshow because it fits the anti-Trump narrative? Yeah, I mean, of course he's right about that. I mean, there's no question about that. If she wrote a glowing book, sort of mostly like his, he wouldn't, uh, she wouldn't get invited for 30 minutes on Meet the Press. She is feeding, spoon feeding the media precisely what they want to hear about Donald Trump, and they are very happy to gobble it up. They'll put her on television. She'll sell a lot of books. Everyone wins except maybe the truth. It, it'll be temporary. They'll use her for, mm -hmm. for getting out the anti Trump sentiment on, on the certain cable networks, and then she'll be gone. It's a cruel business. Yeah, Capri Cafaro, uh, Susan Fericio, Guy Benson, thanks very much. Uh, great discussion.